Hello friends, today we are going to get a power supply working for a pair of speakers that my friend bought and that's going to be an educational experience for all of you, I hope. So here are the speakers. They are Bose. I don't know if that means they're any good. Um, I actually have a very low opinion of Bose. Uh, I think they're mostly a con, but um, they make reasonable small speakers. They did figure out some sort of technique for them that seems to work, so I'm not going to rag on them too hard. Anyway, so the reason that I have a video for this at all uh, is because the power supply requirements for these are quite odd as things go. Uh, on the back here, uh, we have the power supply specifications, uh, and it says uh, 12 volts, 1.2 amps. Let me zoom in there a little bit. So 12 volts, 1.2 amps, but look at that little squiggle there. What the squiggle means is that that's 12 volts AC, not DC. Typically when you find random power supplies at the store, they're gonna be DC, but well, there's more than that. Your typical power supply is DC, and there's a few different reasons for that. I'm gonna show you an example here, so you'll see what I mean. Here's a power supply I just grabbed off of my power strip here. And on the back side here, we can see the specifications say that it's 12 volts, 1.5 amps. You can read that here is the voltage, there's the amperage, here's the polarity where it shows center positive, and then this insignia here means that this is a DC power supply. I've never understood that symbol, but that's what it means. What that means is that the voltage is 12 volts continuously. So on the output pins of this, here's the connector. Because this says that it's center positive, that means that a piece of metal plugged into the center of this plug is going to receive 12 volts positive compared to the outside of this plug. That's DC. It's what almost everything you own works on. It's voltage that's just continuously flowing in one direction. However, alternating current, which is what comes out of your wall, is a whole different story. Alternating current uses this symbol to indicate a sine wave. That is because the voltage continuously oscillates up and down from the voltage that's specified to zero and then to the same voltage that's specified in the negative direction and then back up to zero. So when you say 12 volts AC, what you really mean is 12 volts positive and 12 volts negative. The reason that AC and DC voltages get used has a lot to do with how the technology inside the device works. These speakers have a driver which uses positive and negative voltage in order to push these speaker cones in and out. Now, I'm going to admit that I'm not much of an expert on the way that audio amplifiers work internally. I used to work on them, however, and I do know that they absolutely require negative voltage to work. You could create a sort of false ground in order to produce positive and negative voltages from DC, but it's kind of a pain in the ass, so most audio amplifiers tend to start with an AC power supply in the first place. And that's about the extent of my knowledge about why they do it. The point, however, is that they do it. So what we need for this is a little complicated. It's not only 12 volts AC, it's also 1.2 amps, and that's what's concerning. As an example here, I've just unplugged the power supply for my VGA uh, distribution amplifier, which I've shown you in a previous video when I modified this power brick uh, with a cable that would connect to that distribution amplifier. So this thing here is not an AC adapter. You may know that terminology. It's been used throughout the history of consumer devices. This is not an AC adapter. This is a transformer. Inside this device is nothing other than an iron core with copper wire wrapped around it. That's it. There's literally nothing else in here. If I were to break this open with a hammer, and I would have to because it's glued shut, you would find that inside of here is just a big old hunk of iron with a whole bunch of copper windings around it, and that's it. Down here, we get leg one, leg two, and center tap, and from those, it produces 16 volts AC, meaning that over the course of a second, 60 times, the voltage swings from 16 volts above ground to 16 volts below ground. Note, however, that this is rated at 16 volts AC. I know it's a little hard to see, but it's really lightly impressed on the package. 16 volts AC, 16 volt amps. Now I'm gonna be frank, I never understood volt amps, but uh, for the purpose of our conversation, they're very close to watts. Somebody's gonna get mad at me. You can explain in the comments why I'm wrong. I would love to know. I've never fucking understood. Volt amps could be roughly considered to be watts, so 
the way that Ohm's law works. This is a one amp power supply, okay? And this guy is hefty. This is a big hunk of shit. Now let's look at the first power supply I showed you. This guy here. This is rated at one and a half amps, and it's you see it's thinner. And although it has about the same volume, I've seen this same amperage rating in about a half the package size. Also, this weighs about a solid pound, and this weighs you know maybe a, a it's it's an ounce or something. You can tell just looking at these that there's a big difference between them. And if you don't know what it is, I'll go ahead and explain. This is what's called a switching power supply. And switching power supplies are voodoo. I, I, I could go into more detail, but frankly, they're just goddamn voodoo. The way they work is inscrutable. Um, the proof of this is that the vast majority of them are bad. And honestly, this technology is superior in the sense that it's dead simple. It either works or it doesn't. These guys, they don't have computers in them, but they have dozens of components and there's so many things to go wrong. I'm not going to break this open to show you what's inside of it, but it, it wouldn't mean anything anyway. It's just a shitload of components. I couldn't even explain to you how the hell they work. There's little tiny transformers in there. I know there's, there's high frequency going on. There's some sort of bullshit process where if you step the voltage up to some sort of absurdly high frequency AC, it's easier to convert it in smaller transformers. I, I, I don't know, but here's the takeaway. This guy here takes the voltage that's coming out the wall and it steps it down. That's it. It does it using an analog process. It has a transformer that has more windings on one side than it has on the other. It has no intelligence. It has no regulator circuitry. This is an absurdly sophisticated piece of equipment that couldn't have existed prior to the 70s and it produces exactly 12.00 volts come hell or high water. It has thermal protection circuitry if you short it out, it will gracefully shut down and let you unplug it and plug it back in. But for the purposes of our conversation here, there's a much more important difference with this. This could only output DC. It will only ever output DC. And the reason we're having this video here is because getting a power supply that will put out this kind of current in DC, no problem. Here's one. I paid a dollar ninety-five for this, but I could have ordered one on Amazon for maybe about twelve bucks. Getting a transformer, one that puts out AC in 1.2 amps, that's kind of hard. This one only barely does it, and most of the time when you find AC to AC adapters like this, it puts out 600 milliamps, 250 milliamps. So I need something that puts out a pretty good chunk of juice that's also AC on the output. So I'm going to show you how you get that. Here's our 12 volt 1.2 amp switching power supply, and here is our 12 volt 1.2 amp transformer. This is also known as a linear power supply, although that's a little unfair because a linear power supply often has a lot of regulatory circuitry in it. This one has a lot less, and you're going to see that because I'm going to break it open. Why am I doing that? Well, this is a 12 volt, 1.2 amp DC supply. We need to make it an AC supply, and the beauty of these versus these is that these can be converted to AC. Now, getting this sort of supply open is not easy because uh, it's glued shut. The uh, chassis has a seam right there usually, and uh, yeah, it's ooh, it's shut up pretty tight. So usually what we do is we take our adjuster here and we just give it a good tap. Ooh, that might not come open easily. Uh, I'm going to take this to the vise and uh, lay the, the persuader to it, and uh, we're going to see if I can get this thing open without too much damage. Okay, I gave it a couple of very gentle taps. Uh, honestly, that's not really sarcasm. They, they were pretty gentle. You see, I didn't really splinter the case or anything. It's a bit of an impact crater here, but you know, all in all, it's you know pretty much what it was when I started. So let's just go ahead and open this up. All right. So here is the monster I told you about. That's the transformer. This is iron, just big hunk of iron. And then under here, you can't see it, but those are the windings. This is the A winding, this is the B winding. Uh, there's gotta be more turns on one of those than the other. So the way this works is very simple. These prongs get plugged into your outlet on the wall. 110 volts comes in here. They come in here on the inside and they come around into the primary winding. And then a magnetic field is set up. When the magnetic field collapses, when the AC changes polarity, uh, it has nowhere to go. So it collapses into the secondary winding which has considerably fewer windings on it. So then what happens is it comes out the other side here at a much lower voltage 
and that's it and and you've got your product like that's that's how a transformer works so this is a 10 to 1 winding because we're taking 120 volts and converting it to 12 volts so that means that for every 10 windings here there's one winding here so all this over here this is what converts this voltage to dc uh, we have four diodes and then we have a capacitor those diodes are configured in what's called a bridge rectifier configuration and what that means is that it takes AC voltage in and then the diodes allow the voltage to only flow in the correct direction on either side of the cycle to produce DC out here. So what's great about this is that this is intrinsically an AC device. So if we just clip this out, Bob's your uncle, we're done. We're going to get AC out the other side of this. So we'll just hook that straight up to these wires here and we'll have our AC adapter that produces AC. So let's get started. So first things first, we need to remove the unnecessary circuitry here. And to do that, well, actually we can't clip it out because what's happened is um, right here, it's hard to see if you don't know the construction of these things, but you see how there's this sort of comb here? That's because the windings come off the transformer that go through that comb to keep them stabilized. Uh, so these are actually the output windings of the transformer. So we can't just clip these or we'll lose them. We have to desolder them. So I'm gonna put these big bastards aside and we're gonna be gentle about this. All right, our iron's hot, let's get to it. As I've said in previous videos, when you're desoldering, you always wanna add some fresh solder. This stuff could have impurities in it, but mostly it's just been sitting for God knows how long, and it could be silver solder and whatnot. So we just get some fresh, clean, new solder on there. Let that melt in there. There we go. Get it nice and diluted. Okay. All right, we're gonna do the same thing over here. Get these both ready. And see, we're working with probably very, very, very short wires on the transformer, so uh, we don't want to just uh, try and work it off. We want to get both of these clean at the same time. I don't have my solder sucker with me, so um, we're going to attempt to uh, just whip this thing off uh, by heating up both pads. Just going to clip that on there. Here we go. Gosh, they globbed so much solder on there. That's just wild. So much. Oh, okay, there we go. We lifted that side. I guess I didn't get to do them both like I wanted, but uh, let's go ahead and lift this side. Okay, oh, there we go. All right. So we're free. So now we just need to remove the wires that go to the output cable here. Just clip that on there. Okay. Heat that up. Heat that up. Oh, I clipped the wrong piece of wire there. Okay. Heat that up. Oh, and there we are. Okay. We have ourselves a little bridge rectifier, and I'm just going to throw that in my junk box. And you never know when you're going to need that. Uh, we've got two wires here or two wires there so all we need to do is just make them kiss so you can see they're they're plenty far apart and they're not they're not going anywhere so we don't need to do anything sophisticated all we're going to do is we're just going to solder them straight on nothing nothing special there's already solder on there in addition uh, because this is AC uh, it doesn't matter where we put them there's no ground so let's just go ahead and yeah get that guy melted on there okay There we go. This is barbarian electronics. It's not even electronics, it's electrics. You don't need to worry about anything you're doing. It's just uh, make the metal touch. Everything's gonna be okay. Okay, all right. Then uh, we're just gonna put it back together. That's it, we're done. See, that's why I want to do a demo video, because this is so easy. Anyone can do it at home. So that's it. Um, I'm going to put the case on loosely, and we're going to put a voltmeter on this, find out what it's putting out. Remember, I did put the case back on. I haven't glued it yet, but I'm putting it back on because there's going to be exposed 110 volts inside. We don't want that. On our meter here, we're just going to set this to the 20 volts AC scale. On DC, we would see nothing. Just going to put that there. 
and there. All right, and there is 12.2. Perfect. Okay, that's done. Let's see if it will power up the speaker. Well, I heard it go thump, so it should be on. Uh, let's get some audio and see what we get. So that's that. Um, dead simple, nothing to it. Uh, there's really one of the simplest modifications you can do to any piece of quote unquote electronics. This is something you can do at home with uh, just very minimal soldering skills. So if you ever encounter something that takes an AC power supply, just ask yourself, can I find one that looks like this and weighs about a pound? Um, all you gotta do is do what I did and uh, you'll have yourself your 1.2 amp 12 volt power supply or your a uh, weird ass 9 volt 600 milliamp power supply or whatever because trying to buy these is so hard uh, often you can only find very low current or incredibly expensive ones um, or it says it's AC but you know you can't really tell on some Chinese eBay listing right so um, being able to just make one yourself is fantastic so I'm just gonna glue this up off camera and uh, go ahead and give it back to my friend who needs a pair of speakers for his computer and uh, I hope he enjoys them, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I hope you learned something from it, and I hope you get to use this in your own life. Thank you very much, and uh, have a great week.